The Pocahontas Parkway. You could actually get to the part of it that was um, a Native American like worship site, not just a burial mound. And it's one of the most haunted places in Virginia, right? So to recap, you know, like phantom Native Americans, um, different tribal members, the Algonquin that lived in the area, were accompanied by the eerie sounds of their drums and their chanting and inexplicable noises associated with a stretch of road that began surfacing in 2002. And there is considerable evidence given to those accounts because they were recorded by many different people, a variety of respected witnesses. Motorists, including truck drivers, officers had to send the onlookers home. More serious studiers of the unexplained came out with their equipment, you know, their cameras and their tape recorders and other equipment in order to measure the manifestations. Longtime residents of Richmond can confirm the fact that they and their ancestors known of the activity for decades, but didn't know what to do about it. Most everyone had agreed, and still does, that the basic cause was that it was built upon the sacred worship sites and burial mounds of Native Americans and the Algonquian tribe, the Powhatan. Interest died down, but more recently, Ben Keyes Jr., professional researcher of the paranormal for nearly 60 years, decided to do some investigation for themselves. They're the owner of Greenway and Disputanta like Prince George County in Virginia, and a house that's built in 1720. And it has its own share of hauntings. In 2005, he filed a report called Paranormal Plus. Neighbors who have lived on the adjoining land in the parkway most of their lives swear that they have heard the drum beats and chanting in the early hours of the morning, right? But they've become so used to it that they've simply shrugged them off. In other words, hauntings in like the Powhatan like area and Pocahontas Parkway in Richmond are so common that like people are used to hearing them in the morning. The, the drums of Native Americans from like years ago who have passed on. And not a single person could admit that they're interested enough, okay, they're scared, to go out and learn what was causing them. There are just too many places in all the thousands of acres of woodland, swamps and you know, croplands for Native American spirits to be. Recorded and dated material proves that they had deemed this area to be sacred for years, and the first inhabitants to that area were the Algonquian. Next came the settlers. And during one of the investigations, one very excited person said that they had just seen a Confederate soldier in full uniform on horseback, swinging a sword over their head, right, right past them at the edge of an adjacent field. It's really relevant to my heart. I come from that area, um, Nansen Mond, and then um, adjacent to us are the um, the Algonquian, right? Um, Pocahontas, she comes from there. Um, Mato Aka is her true name. Pocahontas was her nickname. One investigation of the Native Americans took scores of sleepless nights, but the end results were amazing. One night, I decided to attempt to communicate with them, and I stood atop Although you should not do this, you're supposed to stand at the foot of the mound. They stood on the top of the mound and called to them in their ancient Algonquian language. And they acquired a rare copy of the Algonquian language from the early 1600s, attempting to speak it proficiently. Well, that's a respectful way to reach out um, linguistically. Um, you're doing it in earnest to speak to the ancestors, and I think that's, that's very relevant. The first few words had barely left their mouth, and Algonquian when they had heard a popping hiss sound and a bolt of horizontal lightning came at them from about six feet above the ground and it hit the mound and a giant crack opened. Ah, so the spirits responded in other words to being stood upon and they responded in lightning. Yeah, I find that really cool. A lot of um, accounts of like our ancestors indigenously have to do with the great white wolf um, that watches over all that are buried, the fox and the coyote. And another apparition that none can identify, but there's several like cryptids that are described in the forest of Virginia, so it could be one of them. And there are Native American words for them as well. Due to changes in ownership and the stigma, but also respect, they should be preserved. But we're confident that our many pictures and our stories for you can convince you that something paranormal does indeed linger on Pocahontas Parkway. May the spirits of the ancient ones, as well as all the others who still choose to reside on the lands 
forever rest in peace. Yeah, thanks for writing that. Absolutely. Um, restoration for the land because our tie to it is, is very deep and the spiritual um, legacy of Turtle Island is something that even though we're not necessarily Gaelic, um, Sawin does relate to, you know, our ancestors passing on. I don't know if you've had any experiences you'd like to share. I was driving with Justin like about four or five years ago through the battlefield, you know, Manassas. There's a stone house that's recorded to have a lot of spiritual activity, but I didn't see it at the stone house. I saw the spirit at like the tree that's a little bit like higher on the hill, you know? And I was just astounded because I, I, I knew he was a soldier, you know, like there's there's no way, you know, we've all like grown up seeing the pictures of um, Confederate soldiers in uniform. And there's just like, it was just a time of like year of that, like thinning of the bridge that I was like, okay, this is definitely what I'm seeing. Something that has spirits bound to land. Um, some are at peace, so they still stay, but then some aren't at peace. So that has to be like dealt with. And I think a lot of the civil war and the hauntings that happen in this area are because of like that kind of like unresolved tension of war.